That's my waiting to go live dance in case you were wondering. You got to go like, I dance when I eat. It's good. It's good. Uh, hi. We're just going to give people a minute or two to join us in the coffee. So we just, we do this awkward hangout part at the beginning where we sort of stare at each other and wonder. <laughs> It's like when you show up at the restaurant early and it's the other, it's like the least favorite of your friend's group also showed up early. So you two bitches got to sit there and try to make small talk You're until like, the good uh, people show up. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So except, yeah, except I don't think we're that. I think we'll be instant best friends. <laughs> oh, yes, for sure. That's what my creepy stalker self always says to people I fall in love with online. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, good morning, Kelly. Welcome. Just give people another minute. They all mosey here eventually. We're not, uh, you know what I did today? I'll, I'll share my biggest blonde moment as a parent. So we've been homeschooling for the last couple of weeks. So I haven't really had to have a morning routine. And today I was busy, got up early. I'm like, I'll get some work done before the coffee club and it's all good. And I got busy doing stuff and I looked at the clock and was like, oh shoot, I was supposed to take my son to school today. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> he's, he's still sleeping away. He'll be so, I'm like, email the school we'll be there we're just running a bit behind you know yeah yeah it's this whole thing has really kind of thrown us off our games hey if we had any game no to begin with a little bit of game we were clinging to is gone <laughs> yeah, just, but yeah. hey at least we're all in the same boat so it's all good but that's all right all right well it looks like we've got a gang of awesome. Suzanne's here. Good morning. My mom's here. She never watches on a Wednesday because she doesn't like to watch me swear. So this is fun. Uh, Kathy, Kenna, good morning. Good morning. It's good. Well, welcome to Virtual Coffee Club. Uh, of course, it's WTF Wednesday. So this is our day where we vent, where we swear a little bit more, and we hopefully have some fun because life, as I said when I was sort of promoting my guest for today is life is too fucking short to be so serious all the time. So I fell in love with a newfie comedian on TikTok and <laughs> convinced her to come and hang out with us this morning. So uh, everybody, welcome Lisa Baker. Thank you for being with us today. Hi, everybody. No, thank you for having me. I'm excited. What's were you on, like, have you been on TikTok long? Was that something that you just started during COVID? So what happened was with TikTok was um, people kept sending me TikTok videos, right? And so yeah. I'd watch these videos and I thought they were hilarious. And so then I said, well, I'll sign up for TikTok. So I signed up and I kind of just was one of those people that had an account just to be able to watch the videos and be able to actually like the videos. So I wasn't. Yeah. That's the only participation I did up until January 30th. I think it was, I posted my first silly little video and then yeah. um, I would just post a video from time to time. It was nothing. I wasn't super committed to it. And then one morning, I think I was, I was taking my daughter somewhere um, probably to the orthodontist or something. And then I posted a video just on a whim and we left. And when I came home, I was like, Oh my God, what happened? And the video <laughs> went viral. And so then, of course, being a comic, you know, I had I had a bunch of stuff that I was kind of sitting on. So I said, no, I'll just start posting all these videos, you know. And so I started posting more. And it was funny because my daughter was saying to me at first, um, between like the end of January and the end of March, she was like, stop posting the newbie stuff. It's too specific. Like people, you're people from other parts of the world don't give a shit about new fees. <laughs> and I was like, but this is all that I have. So <laughs> it's I just, my identity. It's, yeah. it's who I am. So I kept posting. And then um, the end of March, it was funny because I was just about to release my comedy, my first comedy album at the same time. My boyfriend's a graphic designer who also does uh, silk screening of shirts, right? So like he's made my shirts. And um, 
he was like, he made a couple of designs. So we were going to do it all at the same time. And then my TikTok just exploded. Like literally the end of March, I had 340 some followers. And now today I have like 195,000 followers in like two months. And I don't know what I did, but man, I'm grateful because now it's just, um, the merch, we like the merch is just flying out of here like crazy. And then uh, once we're able to perform live again, I'm now in a better position to be able to self-produce and kind of tour the country on my own instead of depending on bookers and agents and comedy clubs, right? Yeah. So thank God for TikTok. Oh my God, yes. Because I just want to control God, my own career. That. Yeah, I know, right? I'm like, and then I was like, why couldn't this have happened 10 years ago? I'd be in Melissa McCarthy movies by now. What the fuck, though? Now my old haggard ass has got to try to keep up. <laughs> shit. Yeah, shit. Have, do you ever, like, I find I go through, I get lost in what they call the TikTok rabbit hole all the time, right? You just get watching and then you're all of a sudden an hour's disappeared and you're like, what happened? But I want to know. Where was this outlet for people before? Because there's people creating some really amazing stuff that there is. I don't got that kind of energy. Holy crap. I know. And it was, it's been around for a while, but I feel like COVID probably really um, pushed it to the forefront for people because even just the fact, like I, I was at, I was at uh, Shoppers Drug Mart and one of the employees, I'm wearing a mask, but she recognized me because I was wearing my crown. And she said, um, she loves TikTok. She said she finds it to be uh, a really good escape, like especially during these times. But the cool thing about TikTok as opposed to other social media platforms is that when you first go on TikTok, it kind of shows you a little bit of everything. But the videos that you like and react to and interact with, TikTok goes, oh, that's what you like. We'll show you more of that. And so as opposed to Facebook where you'll get like, you know, maybe a funny post and then like a cryptic post and then um, just a shitty post. TikTok's a little more uh, targeted. So I think people are enjoying that part of it more because they can actually go in there and escape um, into stuff that's humorous or stuff that's joyful. I mean, honestly, I follow mostly com like comedy content and dogs on there. Like is my, <laughs> that's like my favorite and small business. I like to support small business. So I do follow a lot of yeah. small businesses and I order from them. Right. But it's, yeah. it's just a cool platform. It's so much smarter than other ones. Yeah. No, mine is like Lisa, llamas and guinea pigs. Like that's it. Llamas are the tits. I love llamas. Mm -hmm. That's so See, funny. I knew I knew we would be instant best friends. And then you pull out the crown and I'm like, I want to wear a crown. Like what? I've got three you, more coming. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. right now you're like endorsed with crowns. So I'll take your crown. Like when you're like, I'm sick of this one. You can pass it over to me and I'll wear I'm it in the collection. my show and promote you. It's so funny too, you because you know, you wear a crown and people are kind of like, who do you think you are? And it's like, oh baby. I know exactly who I am. Okay, <laughs> I earned this Don't crown. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, it's no, so exactly. funny. And so, how long have you been? Have you been a comedian your whole life? What's that been like? Um, no, I've been a comic. God, what am I? Forty three. I was about twenty eight ish. I about fourteen years, I guess. Fourteen, fifteen yeah. years now. I've been. It'll be fifteen years, I think, coming up. But I, I was raising kids. I was a single mom, so for the first. The first, I want to say, yeah, about nine years, I couldn't do it as much as I wanted to do it. Um, I was still like, I was signed to an agency and I would take gigs when I could, but I wasn't very committed until probably the last six years I started going actually real hard and taking it seriously. And once I did, that's when everything started coming to me. Like I started getting the festivals and the CBC credits and stuff like that. So it's uh, the last six years have gone really well. And then finally, um, you know, so many comics were like, you need to record an album. So finally I was like, all right. And now that I've recorded one and as soon as we open up, I plan to record a second one. Yeah. Well, that's fun. Yeah. So what's, yeah, it, I just what's, recording it? what's that? So what's it like to record it? Cause you're kind of just like telling your jokes to yourself then. Right. Well, no, no, no. You oh. record it live. Uh, during oh, a show. Like at a so, show. Okay. Yeah. So the one that I just recorded in November was the same weekend that Alberta went real back into the, you know, no shows, no nothing kind of thing. Um, that was the same weekend. And I was headlining the comic strip in West Edmonton Mall. 
And so we've recorded it over the Friday and Saturday night. So ideally you would record a weekend's worth of shows up to four or five shows. And then you would edit the album together. So you're getting like the best of every night and you put it together and then that's, you release that album. Right. And so that's what we did. All right. And we can find that on your website. Yes. It's on the website for sale. It's like nine 99. It's a digital download. So instant. Instant laughs, yeah. and then people could drive to work and listen yeah. to you and laugh. Yeah, and, and not really know what you're saying. <laughs> it's playing on, yeah, it's playing on uh, Sirius uh, XM as well. They've been uh, last night. Alison Dore was oh, lovely enough yeah. to feature it on broadcast. Yeah, and it's playing on the regular rotation on uh, JFL right now. Yeah, that's really cool. When I would think the Newfoundland tie, just I mean, it's it's niche, but it's I think that's what makes it charming is that. Especially for those of us who, like, I don't, I think we've talked about that before, is we don't always get to um, tour our own country very much. So I think there's a lot of us in the in the country who have never been to Newfoundland, who have always wanted to go right. there, know nothing about it. We have no idea what you're saying half of the time, but we love it. <laughs> yeah, and so that's the thing when you're a comedian, is like trying to find that fine line between, um so like keeping enough of the accent that it's charming, but also because <laughs> people call it code switching and it's where you try to tone down your accent or switch up the way you would normally speak to be a little more, um, I guess, like generalized. So for me, it's fine in that happy medium between full new fee and, you know, totally phony, not me at all. And fine in that happy medium where I can, still be newfie enough that it's funny and charming, but not so crazy newfie that people don't know what I'm saying. Oh, I don't know. I think you should turn it up. <laughs> it's really, it's funny when I turn it. I do it sometimes with my boyfriend just for a laugh, just to see the look on his face. <laughs> <sighs> I get that. Well, we were talking before we, we went live this morning, so we were kind of sharing, okay, what are the things, because this is what we do on Wednesdays, and anybody's welcome to share theirs in the comments, because this is your, your space to vent too, but what have you felt, Lisa, what's been your, like, what the fuck lately in this world? I mean, there's so many things, but there's got to be something that has made you a little crazy. It's come, I've noticed it more since I've been on TikTok, uh, especially like, um, so just to, cause this is a bit of a downer, but I was watching this video of this woman and she was talking about how everybody, because of the vaccine now and uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, people are really talking more about the getting back to normal and yeah. her husband, she's in her early, very early thirties and her husband died of COVID. And no. so, so there's no, there's no such thing for her as going back to normal. It doesn't exist for her. It can't exist for her. And I thought, wow, like that's, that's something I never really thought of. Cause we keep saying to each other, we're all in the same boat, but we're not, we're riding the same storm. Some of yeah. us are in a yacht and some of us are on the Titanic and it's out of lifeboats. Right. And yeah. this is the thing that we need to remember that, you know, we need to have empathy because I know for me, I've been very blessed. We, I've lost out thousands of dollars, but I'm still able to live. I'm still able to pay my bills and eat. And I just don't have that, like, like that extra income anymore, which is fine because there's nothing, nowhere to go or do, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it works, it worked itself it out. But, yeah. yeah. But to see the way people are speak like that whole, it's the toxic positivity of like, like looking at someone who's really struggling and saying, well, at least it's not like this, you know, or what do you mean you're struggling? We're all struggling. Just be grateful. And it's like, you can't, you can't do that to people. Like you have, we have to recognize that some people are really having a hard time. But the other thing that I've noticed too, is the, um, and I don't know if this falls under toxic positivity, but it's almost like a, I call it like the joy ceiling. And it's when people are upset because, um, or people are not even that they're upset, but people who are sort of downplaying their achievements and their, um, you know, their successes because they don't want to upset the person who hasn't been able to get that. So I've noticed it. Like I had a friend who, um, 
a couple of friends actually who've been weird about their pregnancy announcements because they don't want to upset someone who's trying to conceive. Um, people who've lost weight because they don't want to upset people who are struggling with eating disorders or maybe not being as, as successful with um, losing weight. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, okay, I understand the need to be sensitive to people, but at the same time, we're allowed to celebrate the things that have made us happy or the things we've worked hard for there. I don't understand why we're not allowed to do that, you know? And, and so that kind of really annoys me because it's this whole, like, I don't want to upset someone. It's like, that's their feeling though. Like they own that, not you. You're not responsible for that. They are. And yeah. it's, it's just fucking mind boggling to me that we're just look, like, it's like walking up to someone who, standing there with their college diploma and just smacking it out of their hand and being like, no, some people can of that's so classist of you. And it's like, Jesus Christ, like, yeah, you don't know what happy. that person, yeah, just be fucking happy. When, when, when did we stop being happy for other people? When did that become a fucking thing? Yeah, that we could end right now. Like, right now. I 100% agree with you on that because... It's just become, and I don't know, I don't know what, if it has a name or whatever, but yeah, there's an oversensitivity and I get the pendulum swings kind of all the ways, but I don't know about you, but I love seeing people's greatness happening online. Cause then I'm like, me Oh too. good. There is some good shit happening. That means it's going to happen for me too. Like exactly. Yes. Oh my God. I've said that all the time. Like when I see, especially as a comedian, because you'll see a fellow comic get something like a sitcom or a writing gig or yeah. something that you really want. And for, you know, the people will get so jealous of that. And I'm like, you're looking at it the wrong way. What you need to do is look at it in the way that if that guy can get it or that chick can go out and get that, that's an option for you now. That's something that could happen for you instead of seeing it as, you know, I'm pissed off because they got it and I didn't yeah. think of it as something that you could potentially get. And like you said, that's how I look at it too. Like, wow, that's, I could do this. I, this is really like, this is possible. Yeah. Like, how do you take something that should be hopeful and turn it into something negative? Yeah. Quit being a joy suck bag. That's what oh, it Oh God, just a, ugh, I just can't, I can't with some people. I get it. I get it. Why well, we have a few people just saying hello to you this morning. People that have, are watching you on TikTok too. Lori does that. Uh, Carla says good morning from Southern California. And she's Ooh, wondering California. what sort of comedic phrase you could do with Canada for California. She says, hello, my name is Carla Canada and I'm running for governor of California. Interesting. I don't know if you really are, Carla, or if that's just your funny joke, but I like it no matter what. Somebody's trying, Mike's trying to be a uh, newfie with you today. Laura, Thunder, and Jesus, but <laughs> I got the old uh, lady arms now. Heather says, hello from West Kelowna. You sound like my cousin. Kelowna. I might no. be in Kelowna at the end of August. I'm, uh, I might have an opportunity in Kelowna, please God, at the end of August. So, I'm hoping to pull off a show and stuff there. Yeah. That would be great. Uh, you're getting love and positivity from Norway today. So there you Norway. go. Norway. Buffalo, New York. Uh, New Heather York. shares, she's, Heather's what the fuck is she's pissed off with all the girls with good hair. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's doing the, like, quickly, if you just put your pony in a half thing and flip it through and twist it, and they do all of a sudden, all of a sudden their hair looks like this beautiful waterfall i can't figure that shit out i've been trying but yeah i read it that's it that's all i got i just do this i do the messy bun with the five pounds of dry shampoo or i curl <laughs> it that's those are my two stuff. <laughs> it's like yeah and i look for it at the dollar store now i liked your video the other day about your dollarama groups i feel you on that that's another one the fuck to go find you there that is a total what the fuck <laughs> share that like, one I, thought, I thought i love dollaramas like if i and because uh, i when you're a comic you travel a lot so if i'm in a city and i see a dollarama i'm so excited because i'm like i've never been to that dollarama but <laughs> yeah. they they take it to a whole new level and it, people like i've gotten a little bit of pushback on the video because people are like i have the dollarama backsplash and i'm like listen i get that they sell it 
But you also need to realize that that might not be suitable around sources of heat. Nobody checks <laughs> the safety on any of this shit. Like your house is going to go up like Tinder. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like just because it is a dollar doesn't mean you should buy it. Like, absolutely, you get what you pay for. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. It's so good. <laughs> They're like, well, I hope you. Go ahead. Oh no, I was saying like the one just like the this charger. I from my phone almost caught my house on fire. I'm like, well, what a surprise. What a surprise, Marilyn. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. When we get dollar store things and they break, even my 12 year old is like, Well, you know, you get what you pay for, Mom. That's right. I'm like, I I can't <laughs> argue with that logic, but I, I just really can't. <laughs> They're sad about it. They want to bring stuff back. They're like, there's no refunds. I'm like, it was a dollar. Have you seen um there's a guy on TikTok who turned like real Facebook fights, like arguments on Facebook, he turned them into song. Have yes. you seen this guy? Yes. Like that's endless content. You've got to start stealing some of that. <laughs> there's, there's another guy who who um acts out marketplace conversations so, <laughs> and they're great these videos are great he's just like um he'll put on a wig and and just play like the lady who's asking questions to the person selling the item and then you know when somebody like you like they're like how much and you're like 50 bucks and then they don't respond so he'll do this thing where he'll be like 50 bucks and it cuts to the other person and they're just like Sitting there, nothing because they're not responding. And then it's like three weeks later. Hey, is this still available? Like it, the conversations <laughs> are hilarious though. Like, and oh, it's the best. It's the best. All right. What do you miss about Newfoundland the most? Because you live in Alberta now, right? I do. Yeah, I live in Edmonton. Um, what do I miss the most? I think probably the like the fact, uh, like probably like the like. The whole kitchen party culture, um, social aspect of it, because Newfoundland is very like the last time I went home, I was um, in a pub and I was having a meeting with someone uh, regarding a comedy festival and the bartender walked over and laid a beer in front of me. And I was like, oh, I didn't order another. And she goes, no, no, um, this is from Tina and Paul. And Tina and Paul are family members of mine who frequent that pub. They weren't at the pub, but they knew I was and called the pub and said, hey, can you send the beer over to Lisa and put it on our tab? So that's the kind of stuff I miss that whole, like, yeah. even when we can't, even when we're not around each other, we're still trying to be social, you know? And it's, it's a very different, um, it's a very different culture, like in the sense that you can just talk to a stranger and, um, and make a friend. So I really miss that. I miss that part of it. I miss the colors and the the air and the, that kind of thing, but definitely the, the culture of just, you know, friendliness is what I miss the most. And interesting, like, why is your province so much more friendly than all the other ones? Is it the uh, air? Uh, is it the ocean? It's like no. I think it's just that we don't have any sense of self-preservation. Like we've never had. Um, where it's it, it's just a thing. Like I mean, of course we have crime there and stuff like that, and it's gotten worse over the years, just like everywhere else. But I think that we just have this sense of community, maybe that other places don't have as much um depending on where you are in the province of course right like it, it would vary but yeah I, get, I think that might be just what it is like we're just friendly pe and we're nosy people so like that's the other thing right it's like <laughs> I can't find out about your life without talking to you so I'm gonna go over and talk to you and see what I can pull out of you you know right. so <laughs> it's just it's just There's how we are right there you just you're all writing books about everybody yeah else. yeah pretty much like yeah it's uh it's a gift too. Like, it's just like, you'll walk away from someone and they'll be like, you know him? And I'll be like, no, but his father's sick. He's in the hospital and his mother passed away a few years ago. Right. And he got a couple of youngsters now and him and the missus, you know, she's working all the time. And like, honestly, the stuff that you'll find out about people is mind boggling. <laughs> you just, you know, all the whole thing. We just know everything. We know the guy's whole life story. Yeah. It's just how it is. Yeah. Well, I would love you before we let people go. I like to be mindful of time, but I would love to to give people some info on 
where they could learn more about your stuff, find some, get your download, all that kind of stuff. Where do they do that? Well, my my website is just lisabakercomedy.com. Um, my, all of my handles on social media are Lisa Baker comedy. So Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook. It's just Lisa Baker hyphen comedian, uh, for the page there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm on pretty much everything. So if you just type in Lisa Baker comedy, you're going to find me. Like you're everywhere. You're everywhere. I'm all over the place. I'm I trying. Yeah. I'm trying to be <laughs> like the kids. Just like the kids. It's so hard. Yeah. I don't it know. Is. I don't know how people, your TikTok videos are great because you're really just, they're just talking. But I don't know how people do like the music and the dancing and the speeding it up so that all your pictures bang with them. Like, I, I can't figure yeah. it out. I'm pretty, I'm pretty social savvy, but that one's. I just honestly, like that was the thing too. Cause I was like, I I've done videos with a buddy of mine where we do, we record sketches. I had those are online too, but it's not, and I love doing sketch, but it's not something that I'm, uh, I've done a great deal of. I've done live sketch tours and stuff like that, but, um, I'm more, I like to do the kind of ranty thing where I start talking and it's just like bang, 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 bang. And it's more in line with how my stand up is. So it's very natural to me to do it that way. And people seem to really like it. And I think, I think the most common thing I get from people is they like the honesty, like how I'm just, I just say shit. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you, you like it until I'm at your house talking to your <laughs> friends. And then I'm still brutally honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We all want honesty till it's directed towards us. And, then right? it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. and that's another that's thing I miss that. about it. Yeah, I miss that about Newfoundland for sure. Being able to just because out here it's not. I'm like, oh shit, you don't say stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do. We need more of you. More honesty. More. More. Just calling it like it is. Why not? Like, yeah, I just like you said, life's too short. I don't have time. I don't have. <laughs> I don't have time to sugarcoat shit. Right? To edit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Oh, it's awesome. And I appreciate you taking time to to connect and have coffee with us. And I hope we'll be able to do it again. And yes, I think it would be cool as we'll just we're gonna manifest that things are gonna open up and you're gonna go on tour and then we'll check in with you from your big tour and see how things are behind the scenes. Like right, we've got yeah. this in as you get increasingly famous. We'll still just keep pestering you and you'll be like, oh, the girl with the coffee club for fuck's sakes. But you'll no, let me in if you feel bad and then we'll keep the coming back friends. I love stuff like this. Yeah. And then we'll go down the street. We can hold hands and wear crowns and ride llamas. Like I haven't thought of it at all. Just off the top of my head. Yeah. I like your vision. I, I, appreciate, I re appreciate your vision. I'm down. I mean, I'm all about it. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Lisa, for hanging out. Her website's right here on the screen. Go check out her stuff. Follow her on socials. If nothing else, just in those days when you just need a laugh moment, you're really good at delivering us a laugh moment, Lisa. So you've been a, a godsend during this crazy time. So I'm so glad I stumbled across you in a TikTok rabbit hole. Oh, I'm so glad people did too. Like, I just appreciate everybody so much for the follows and everything. Like, it, it really means a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Well, have an amazing rest of your Wednesday. You too. And thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Of course. And thanks for having me and I'll be back. All right. Cheers, everybody. Have a great rest of your Bye. Wednesday. And we'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Bye, everyone.